This is a three-phase induction motor. We have separated sets of coil in the stator. The end of each set will connect with terminals in a terminal box. When connecting to electrical supply stator winding produce rotating electromagnetic field. To power the coil we found an electrical terminal box in the top or side of the motor. Inside this box we have six electrical terminals. Each terminal has a corresponding letter and number. We have V1, U1, W1, and W2, U2, and V2. We have our phase 1 coil connected to the two U terminals. Then the phase 2 coils which are connected to the V terminals. and phase 3 coil which is connected to the two W terminals. Notice the electrical terminals are arranged in a different configuration on one side to the other. We now bring in a three phases power supply and connect this to the respective terminals. For the motor to run we need to complete the circuit. And there are two ways to do this. The first way is delta configuration. For this we connect across the terminal U1 to W2, V1 to U2, and W1 to V2. This will give us delta configuration. Now if we provide a AC current through the phases. Now electricity flows from one phase to another as the direction of AC power reverses in each phase at a different time. The other way we can connect the terminals we can use star connection configuration. In this method we connect W2, U2, and V2 on only one side. This will give us star connection. In this case when electricity passes the electrons are shared between the phases. Due to the design differences the current flowing in the star and delta configuration is very different. Let's have a look at the difference between the star and delta configuration. Let's say we have motor connected in delta. The supply voltage of 400 volts. That means when we measure the voltage between any two phases we will get a reading of 400 volts. We will call this line-to-line -line voltage. Now if we measure across the two end of the coil we again see the line voltage of 400 volts. Let's say each coil has a resistance or impedance as the alternating current of 20 ohms. That means we will get a current reading on the coil of 20 amps. We can calculate that 400 volts divided 20 ohms which is 20 amps. But the current in the line will be different that will be 34.6 amps. We get that 20 amps multiplied by square root of 3 which is 34.6 amps. That's because each phase are connected to two coils. Now if we look at the star configuration we again have, line-to-line -line voltage of 400 volts we see that, if we measure between any two phases. But in star configuration, all coil are connected together meet at the star point, or neutral point. From this point we can run a neutral wire if needed, so this time when we measure the voltage across the end of any coils we get a lower voltage of 230 volts. That because the phase is not directly connected to two coils like in the delta configuration. One end is connected to a phase and other end is connected to a shared point. So the voltage is there for shared. The voltage is less as one phase always in reverse. We can calculate this 400 volts divided the square root of 3 which is 230 volts. As the voltage is less the current will be 2. This coil also has impedance of 20 ohms, then 230 volts divided by 20 ohms equals 11.5 amps. The line current also therefore be the same at 11.5 amps. So we can see the delta configuration coil is exposed 400 volts between two phases. But the star configuration is only exposed 230 volts between the phase and neutral point. So the star uses less voltage and less current compared to the delta version. 
Thanks for watching and stay tuned for an another video.